This year marks the centenary of the Communist Party of China. Uh, do you think there's such a thing as China model? And in what ways do you think this China model can inform perhaps the developing countries? Well, uh, I think a Chinese government uh, have uh, uh, clearly stated and uh, it has no intention to export China's model. So from my understanding, China's model is defined as a, a kind of approach of development with Chinese characteristic. So this kind of achievement based on a very, very important precondition, the Chinese Communist leadership. From my understanding, except China, you cannot find any country has uh, this uh, precondition. That means uh, you cannot find uh, any country have uh, a Chinese communist uh, leadership. Without uh, that precondition, mm -hmm. I don't think these countries can follow Chinese model. Second, the model is uh, with the Chinese characteristic, means that if that country is not, has no Chinese characteristic, they cannot uh, uh, copy this model. But no matter how many times Beijing says it doesn't intend to make the rest of the world Chinese, it doesn't want to export its political systems, uh, many in the West simply don't buy it. Oh, I think uh, uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, some people think the BRI is an approach to export China's uh, model. Actually, if they examine the BRI project, they will find that first, all of the BRI projects are bilateral rather than multilateral. That why? That means uh, you cannot make this kind of a cooperation multilaterally. So if everything is a bilateral, I doubt you can make it a universal. Mm. And so I firmly believe Chinese model is a very, very special and with uh, the special characteristic. And, uh, the question is not whether China want to export it or not. The question is whether other country can copy it or not. Just like you find the students and uh, uh, did very good with his exam, and but his way to do the exam possibly cannot be copied by anyone else because he do it in a very special way. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, a lot of uh, you know uniqueness in yeah, the, the Chinese uniqueness model. Is there. How would you clarify, you know, put into words some of the, some of the unique Chinese characteristics that you kept emphasizing? Uh, I think the uniqueness of a Chinese model is that they adjusted the policy or the uh, governance according to the change as quick as possible. And this is uh, really uh, difficult. And uh, because Whenever a uh, government adopt a political principle, it's difficult to abandon it, or to change it, or reform it. But Deng Xiaoping strongly uh, argued that, no, we have to, and reform this country continuously, endlessly, according to the uh, change of the uh, objective uh, environment. So I think uh, this is uh, really difficult for other countries uh, to copy. So, like Deng Xiaoping even have a very uh, well-known saying, no matter what the color, white or yeah. <laughs> black, and uh, only catch the mouse is a, a good cat. cat. Yeah. I doubt any other foreign government uh, uh, like to use this yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. metaphor for their, to guiding their, uh, their uh, political principle. You know, Fr Francis Fukuyama wrote an article back in March, <laughs> you know, lamenting the rigidity uh, uh, of the American system. Uh, you know, it's very hard to you know, sell the ideas uh, of the p political right to the left. Uh, yes. It's very hard to you know, <laughs> or convince the liberals uh, the, the right-wing values, yeah. Yeah. you know, even um, you know, such is the rigidity of the U.S. Uh -huh. system. So once uh, some uh, uh, people ask me, and uh, what's the uh, uh, difference between Chinese uh, concept of legitimacy and uh, Americans' uh, uh, concept, I said that for Chinese, legitimacy, it does not mean the process. It means the result. If you do something good, the result is good. Okay, let's, let's legitimize. But in the U.S., it's the uh, uh, opposite. They say, no, no, no. Yeah. The question you have, the, the process should be legitimized, yeah. is not the result. For Chinese, they concern, you have good process, but then bring, <laughs> bring, uh, bring us a bad result. So what? <laughs> yeah. 
very different ideologies, very different value systems, um, I would say. You and your team are putting together the World Peace Forum to talk yeah, about yeah. Uh, U.S.-China post-COVID security cooperation. Um, tell us more about that. I mean, how do you think COVID-19 will shape uh, global geopolitics, especially when it comes to China and the U.S. in the security mm -hmm. area? Uh, actually, the COVID-19 has uh, blocked the whole world and uh, stopped person-to-person uh, -person contact. And without a person-to-person -person contact, the diplomacy cannot achieve its uh, uh, fundamental role. And uh, so now people call this a uh, virtual diplomacy, uh, either as a, a microphone diplomacy <laughs> or the cold diplomacy. So you find that, uh, and uh, Biden's uh, recent person-to-person uh, uh, -person, uh, uh, diplomacy in Europe achieved uh, some results and make people uh, realize that. And the diplomacy must uh, carry it out with the approach of uh, people to people. You cannot rely on the website diplomacy to settle down the problem or improve the relationship or unite it or consolidate the relationship. And uh, beside that, the COVID-19 also blocked people to people's contact at a social level. Without the people to people contact, there's uh, no cooperation. Mm -hmm. That's just we say, we never talking about uh, the human beings cooperation with the, something on the moon. Yeah because there's no human, yeah. right? So now I think uh, the COVID-19 really make uh, the uh, anti-globalization moving forward rather than to push for or resume the globalization.